Good morning. I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt, and I am uh, going to give you a little video here this morning on uh, surgical orthodontics. Uh, I'm uh, with the American Orthodontic Society. I'm board qualified in that organization and also in the International Association of Orthodontists. And I have a general dentist now, but I've done nothing but orthodontics for the past, oh, looks like 42 years. Uh, I've done a good bit of, of TMJ uh, work, you know, in with the orthodontics, so that you can't separate from it. So this morning I'm going to go through a surgical case that was uh, fairly severe and it had to be operated in two jaws to correct it and uh, I did this with a, a excellent oral surgeon in Dallas who is Dr. Larry Wolford who is quite well known and a very uh, fine guy so anyway here goes and I'll show you the, the case uh, this young man has a I'm sure a breathing problem, and he had a lot of other problems, you know, and the, the jaw is really short, so he's going to operate on he'll lengthen the lower jaw and break the upper jaw back some, and to fix this up, and you'll see the profile when you get through. This was just a little more than I could, uh, I couldn't possibly tackle this case uh, without some surgical help. Uh, you could have made it look a little better and everything, but it would still have problems. So uh, watch the result of this. And when you look at it from the front, it looks pretty good, you know, except the, the jaw is short here, and and uh, this is out a little further than it should be. Uh, so watch what happens here, and I'll show you the case as we get through uh, with it. Now, uh, as a general dentist I work with a lot of surgeons that had no problem at all they just want to know can you do the orthodontics you know and uh, the surgeon usually takes over the case and he'll tell you what he needs done and then you do that in what's called pre-surgical orthodontics and then you turn it the case over to the he'll check it out and find out when it's like he wants it and uh, then he will take over the case. They do the surgery and then watch the case for oh sometimes six weeks or a couple of months. Now I have uh, uh, worked with the surgeons a lot. I've, I've even gone in and scrubbed in with them on cases so and uh, uh, it is very interesting but uh, it's something I don't want to get into for sure. Uh, it's a very interesting thing though. Uh, anyway, let's go and see what we uh, do here. Now this is the models. They were not orthodontically uh, set up. They just uh, kind of rough poured, but this is the way uh, <coughs> this young man looked, you know. Uh, he had, uh, <laughs> it was a messed up case. Uh, really, and uh, he had a. Let me get the. I'm getting old, and my voice starts rattling, <laughs> so I take a, a little cough drop or something here to kind of keep it uh, keep it down some. Uh, this is a pretty bad orthodontic case. Uh, if you had to just do the best you could and that was all you were going to get done, uh, I could make it look better than it does now, but I couldn't really uh, accomplish what I would like to do in the, in the case. Uh, when we look at it from the side, now the surgeon told me, you know, what he wanted to do. He wanted to take out this wisdom tooth over here and take the second by cuspid up above here and he would take this out and then he would turn it over to you to line up these segments in here 
and pull them together part of the way and, and just go ahead and do your regular orthodontics. There's a lot of slides that I don't show you in here. Uh, now we, we did that and I'll show you some x-rays on it. And the same thing over here, here are the two uh, bicuspids, the first and the second back here and he wants me to take out the eights back here at the back or he wants to take them out. He's going to take them out. In fact, he, I guess he does the surgery and takes the, those uh, out. He doesn't want me sending them to somebody else. Uh, so anyway, here we go and uh, we go through the orthodontics and uh, Here's the upper model, you can see it. We're going to compare these after we get through to show you what the difference uh, there is. Uh, and he takes the bias and get everything, and then I start the case and do the pre-surgical orthodontics and line all these segments up and get them ready for him. Now looking in the mouth, you get, uh, this is pretty poor photography here, but you've seen it on the model, so you can kind of get an idea of the uh, problem that we've got in here. Okay, now this is after the surgery. Then you, you get the case back to do pre uh, post-surgical orthodontics. And we line up these segments. You see the, the cut here and uh, then over on this side, I think it's right in here. Yeah, there's that where I cut the, the arch wires were cut there where they brought that together. Now I sent it in, they had the arch wire in there. Then he did a sectional deal here, one up here, and one over on this side, plus lengthening the jaw and raising it in here. I use these little brackets that have vertical slots, you see, and he put uh, we put pins in there for him so he could hook these uh, elastics on those. And uh, just because you're a general dentist or a pediatric dentist, there's no reason you can't do surgical orthodontics. Surgical orthodontics just makes the orthodontics easy for you. The orthodontics in surgical work is, is really simpler than trying to take it all on yourself, I'll tell you, because I've done some real raunchy cases and it's a lot harder than doing this surgical case. Stuff. So here we go in that, uh, the anterior facial view, the side view, we've got him in a good class one relationship all the way back and we just pulling these together. Now my job will be to come in and put the arch wires in here and pull everything up snug and just put the finishing touches on the case orthodontically just doing that. Okay, here's the upper model after the finish, but it's not, uh, you know, pulled together like I want it and like we'll, we'll do it. And here it is on the bottom, the same situation. Now, we went ahead and finished this young man out, and I'm just going to show you the finished uh, product. There's a lot of slides missing in this case. I'm sorry, but I didn't have all this to bring to you. But uh, you can get the idea of what it is. Now, this is 1990, it's two years just about after we started working on him. Now these folks had to move to Colorado and I had to leave this case before I was totally uh, satisfied and he wasn't either. He would rather have kept them around but they stayed and they wore the retention good and the case to my knowledge is in good shape today. Okay, here's what it looked like when we finished it up. Now I'm going to show you. Let's see. You go back. That's the side view. And here it was to start with. Here is the lower arch. And well, let's see. No, we're back. 
this is the side view right here it went with this view there there's a tremendous difference in this and this now we look at the uh, anterior part you see the gap you had up there and there's the anterior after you finish uh, there's a lot between <laughs> between this and this there's a lot of work done between that now uh, we look at the upper arch this is the way it looked when we started and this is the way it looked when we finished it and had it ready to go this is the lower arch and this is the lower arch I don't know how we got the tongue out of there for this picture of us pushed it back with the mirror or something uh, but you can see the lower arch after we finished uh, now here the arches are together and I use one of these little removable lower uh, retainers which I do not really like because you can swallow the darn things and so I and then it has a wire that goes over the occlusion but I made sure that wire didn't hit the cuspid right in here uh, when I put that in for him and the upper is just a wrap around with nothing going across the occlusion you can make these things where they will stay in you'd have to force them out to get them out so you do not need clasp on upper retainers do not use it just use total wrap around this is a 036 round stainless steel wire I do not like these flat wires I'd rather have round now this wire here is an 028 wire and they're soldered they're laid on top of one another right here and soldered together and that will hardly ever break I've had people use these things for 30 years you know and they wear and I put a bite plate on every one of them underneath there so these teeth come up and have something to meet underneath there now this is okay but I would much rather bond these teeth together from the back side they're just harder to clean and this thing they lose it and all sorts of things you don't want to lose it in the night and swallow the darn thing that's a mess okay so you can see what the retention is and looking at the front, it's like that. And look at the side, it's a good class one. Now our second molars back here didn't get fully erupted in here before we had to go to Colorado. And the whole family moved to Colorado and I made him promise he would stay with this. I gave him freedom enough for this tooth to erupt together. Now this, where you have the freedom of the teeth to come together they look a lot better after a few months uh, where the teeth will erupt into each other and kind of wear in and uh, that's the best retention uh, is not something with a clasp going on that it keeps them from erupting together properly and they'll move one way in the day when they got the retainer and then come up another another way in the night. I want the teeth to rub together and wear in. And that's what we have them do. And that is the best way to do. Do not use clasp on retainers. Uh, and I, now this tooth right here is probably touching that wire. And I don't like that, you know. So uh, I do not recommend these but you can bond them on them much better. We had some reason for doing it, and I've forgotten what. So, now I want to show you the x-rays on it. So, here are the wisdom teeth, and the first is on the bicuspid on the bottom, and the second on the top. And those teeth he took out, 
and the same thing over here except he doesn't have a wisdom tooth up here this is a kind of a uh, I think that's a uh, he was missing one in that area uh, so he took those other teeth out and we went in and straightened all this we could straighten that up and line all that and pull these segments together and get them all doing in the pre-surgical orthodontics and then when you're finished with that or you're getting it he'll check it he'll have the patient come in and he sees it he says okay this is fine we can start the surgery here then he'll take over the case and do uh, the surgery and if you want to look in on it as he does it you can you can check on it and then he'll watch it usually for about I say he now there may be some excellent female uh, or surgeons uh, we don't have one in this area but I've worked with several uh, uh, or surgeons and never had any problem with any of them as far as what we did and uh, so this is not something that you say oh god you know I don't want to get mixed up in this old surgery it makes the orthodontics much simpler really okay now we took the teeth out see I've got a little hump a little thing a little right, like a line here we raise that up straighten that tooth out got it lined up good and closed in we had it went in when we had the segments lined up in here he cut the arch wires and then moved these segments around like he wanted to in the surgery and you had them lined up straight though where he could do that now here uh, is another one after it's lined up a little better see how we straighten that tooth up and the roots are parallel and everything we sent that in with our simple little uh, deal on the side just picking it up like that uh, now and I think this is when we sent him in or the surgeon he would check him every uh, month or two or three months or something and when it got like he wanted we said this is good enough we'll go and so he took him in and did the segmented surgery on the case now this x-ray shows you see he sectioned the chin and brought it up in the front and brought in brought it forward and screwed it back together with these little screws right in here so that's a pretty major deal itself I've scrubbed in on them and that you just I just backed off said thank you God that you heal them up I don't know how uh, they get them now these segments you see he's got these little plates with screws in them right here on all these these cases like that and uh, put that all together that's the way they look after they get through now in just a short time this bone will fill in and you won't hardly see this it's amazing how the body heals up this uh, orthognathic surgery you when you're doing it you wonder how in the world it heals that way and this will fill in right here see where this is screwed together I've got it just uh, taking it in segments here so you can see it a little better uh, and all I want you to know is you do not have to be afraid or back off on orthognathic surgery uh, you can learn how to do it now some people just don't want to do it that's okay I don't care but I did everything it came across the board as you can see and surgical orthodontics was not a difficult part for me I don't recommend somebody just jumping in and doing it without really getting thoroughly trained in the orthodontics and so you pass the boards of the American Orthodox Society 
and we've got the International Association, they've got boards too, and I've gone through both of them and taught and helped and graded in them and everything else. Well, you will know how to do orthodontics. Uh, they're pretty good uh, boards. And now this is a close-up of the uh, correction. See how much space you've got in that jaw. He brought it out and kind of picked it up out here on the front. Uh, it's amazing what you can do in here. This is just the other, the right side, and I had to quit before I let, got these teeth coming together good here. These folks were moving up to Colorado. I think it got better than that. I just didn't have a picture of it to show you. And here is the young man, and that's what he looked like uh, when he left here. He's a great kid, looked good, and you would never know that it was like it was when you started. Yeah, uh, so you can go back and look at what he looked like when he first uh, started in here. And this is the cephalometric after the surgery, you see. All this stuff up here, all these little plates, and here the screws on both sides of the mouth, see, on both sides of the jaw. Uh, but this is him cephalometrically. And uh, that is a tremendous change in that person. Now, he really needed this orthodontic surgery. I could not have accomplished this orthodontically. So I'm going to hush up and uh, hope you'll learn something for this. I would not advise you jumping in on one of these until you've done the boards or you really know how to do orthodontics, but you really need to pass these boards. Because if something comes up and you haven't passed these boards or you haven't even attempted, uh, people do not know what you know how to do. And they want the surgeons, they watch you and they know if you can do good orthodontics, then they don't care. But they don't want to go into a case like this with somebody that doesn't know how to do the orthodontics. So just learn it and pass the boards and you can join the American Orthodontic Society just being a dentist but you don't know how to do orthodontics but when you and you work up in steps and you take uh, courses and you take I've had so many hours of postgraduate education I could have gone back to school for five years I think <laughs> not I've listened to and gone to meetings and over the years and still do and uh, the organization keeps records of your postgraduate training so if anything happens and somebody wants to know what you know the organization knows what you've done and what you do and that's uh, your records are kept in the Academy of General Dentistry also uh, but uh, the American Orthodontic Society and also the International Society keep records of all the hours and things that you've studied and what you studied and uh, and this is your uh, record and if you pass these boards it's pretty darn sure that you know how to do orthodontics you can't really fake your way through them you've got to know it you know so uh, uh, I don't want to scare you off of it, but I think every dentist ought to know how to do orthodontics. If you don't want to do it, okay, let somebody else do it. But know how it's done and what can be done. And I think the general public ought to know what can be done. And so we put this in a video and Lord knows it goes all over the world, so anybody can look at it. So I'm going to hush and uh, 
hope you do get something from this uh, surgical orthodontics and y'all have a good day so I'm going to close out